My dear brothers and sisters, we get today John's version of the feeding of the 5,000. And it's interesting that when we look at this account in both John's gospel and in the other gospels, we see something very interesting. Mark and Matthew and Luke say that Jesus gives the loaves and the fish to his disciples and has them distribute them. We can imagine what it would be like to be one of the disciples. To have Jesus say, distribute these things. And to look at something so meager as five loaves and two fish in comparison to 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, and saying, okay, Lord, I don't know how this is going to be enough, but you said distribute it, so I'm doing it. The question we want to ask ourselves is, do we really believe that what the Lord calls us to do is actually impossible for our own humanity to fulfill? Or, as we hear in the first reading, are we trying to live our faith as only something from human origin? Because if we are, it will destroy itself. Anything that the Lord is asking of us, whether it's holiness or whether it's preaching the gospel with the accompanying signs of healing, prophecy, words of knowledge, the charisms of the Holy Spirit, are impossible for our own humanity to do. And that's where our faith and our trust come in and we are asked to rely no longer on our own power, but on the power of Christ. We hear in Scripture when St. Paul experiences a thorn in the flesh, that is, his weakness, or a weakness that is still a part of his life. He cries out to the Lord, asking the Lord to take it away. And the Lord says to him, no, For my power is made perfect in weakness. And so it invites us, brothers and sisters, to recognize our weakness. To recognize that we aren't able to do what God asks of us on our own power. But we're not left dejected because, let's face it, If we put our faith in ourselves, we would be dejected. But our faith is not in ourselves. We don't stand up on Sunday and profess faith in me, myself, and I. We profess faith in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And in that profession of faith, we know that God is the faithful one. And if he has promised then he will fulfill what he has promised. He has promised through scripture and in various ways, whether it's private revelations that people have had that have been approved as worthy of belief from the church, or whether it's through scripture, God has promised that he will be the one to bring us to the holiness that he even desires in us. So long as we cooperate with God, And part of that cooperation is that faith that says, God, I don't understand how I'm supposed to to do what you ask of me, but I'm willing so long as you give me the power and give me the grace.